Hello, good evening, and welcome to a brand new week. And welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome once again. Lots of welcomes going on today, but you are very, very welcome. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. Thanks for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. Both boys back at school today, which has made things a bit quiet. I took Lola to the vet because she had a little bit of problem with an ear. So she's got a little ear infection, but don't worry, she'll be okay. 94 pounds later, I was able to walk out with some ear drops. That was all fine and dandy. Anyway, we won't worry about the cost of the vets. We're just going to crack on. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Go and check them all out. There's loads of bits and pieces, especially on our Instagram and our Facebook. They're definitely worth a look. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And if you could follow us there, that would be even better. We've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And if I could ask you a little favour, if you could just share our show on your social media feeds to your friends, I'd appreciate it. And I know they would. They'd love it. Time now for comedy. As always, on a Monday, it's Hancock's Half Hour. This one is called The Junk Man. The BBC presents Tony Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock's Half Hour. Don't you think it's about time you cleared all that rubbish out of the sideboard? Yes. Yes, it's getting a bit loaded up, isn't it? It's amazing how things collect over the years. Yes, come on, let's have a clear out. Well, take the drawers out and empty them onto the table. Now, come on, Bill, give me a hand. Uh, now, careful now, don't drop it. That's it. Now, now turn it upside down. <laughs> Look at it all. How can anyone get so much stuff in one drawer? I can't understand it. We cleared it out five years ago. <laughs> well, I don't know why you don't tip it all straight onto the fire. It's all junk. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Still, we might as well sort it out first. I mean, most of it can go, but there might be just one or two things in there we ought to keep. All the things we want to keep, we'll put back in the drawer. Let's see now, what have we got here? Uh, what about all this string here? That can go. No, 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 no. We're always looking for string in this house. Now, undo all the knots, roll it up into a ball and put it back. Let's see now. Hair grips, an elastic band, a bit of billiard chalk, German stamp, two drawing pins, a pipe cleaner, a matchbox, a couple of five stones, a doorknob, some curtain runners, half a pair of sunglasses, <laughs> domino, bit of glass, toy soldier with his head off, and a nail. Right, we'll put all that lot in the cigar box and put them back. Why? I thought we were clearing it out. We are, but we've got to discriminate. You never know when that stuff might come in handy. We must only get rid of the useless stuff. Now, put it back. Now, we know where it is when we need it. Now, what else have we got? A couple of screws. Better keep those. They must have fallen out of something. <laughs> we've just got to wait till something or other falls to bits, then we know where they've come from. <laughs> You'll be glad we kept them, then. All right, then, but please throw out something. Well, I intend to. That's the idea of having a clear-out. Now, there's some marbles here. Well, you don't need those. Ah, yes, but this one's a red rider. They're very rare. <laughs> very rare they are. We'd better keep that. Uh, how about the other two? Well, if we're going to keep one, we might as well keep the others. <laughs> Put them back. This is interesting. Four bits of jigsaw puzzle. A man's hero. <laughs> Bit of sky. A bit of ship's flag and a green bit. <laughs> Do you think it's that Drake on Plymouth Hoe one you bought me when I was in bed with my feet? <laughs> what happened to that? It was set out on the tea trolley, wasn't it? Yeah, it gradually got mixed up with the broken biscuits and sort of slowly disappeared. <laughs> yes, well, I think we'll keep these. Put them back in the drawer. What is the point of keeping four bits of stray jigsaw puzzle? Because I am not convinced that the rest of it is missing. Supposing we found the other 996 bits and we'd thrown these away. I'd never forgive myself. Beautiful stretch of pale blue sky with a hole in it. It'd look horrible. 
We will keep them until it is ascertained beyond all possible doubt that the rest of it is not in existence. Now, what's this? Two French francs. We'll keep those in case we go on holiday. <laughs> well, this can go. This is no possible use to anyone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is it? Let me see it. It's a wireless licence for 1936. <laughs> you can't throw that away. Have you gone mad? Supposing a gentleman from the BBC comes round and says, you didn't pay your wireless licence in 1936. <laughs> well, then I've got proof here that I did. I keep all my old bills. You can put that in the loft with all the others. Well, we might as well throw these stones out. I don't know how they got there. You can't throw my stones away. These are not just ordinary stones, matey. These are from the beach at Bogner Regis. <laughs> They have tremendous sentimental and intrinsic value. I count them amongst my most treasured souvenirs. Look at them worn smooth by countless centuries of eternal battle with the movement of the restless sea. <laughs> I shall gaze at them when I'm old and grey, sitting back in me old rocker, contemplating the wondrous subtlety of the shade in the strata that traverses them. And remembering... <laughs> just remembering the most miserable holiday I ever spent in my life. <laughs> Some spotty-faced little Herbert prized them out of the tar on me bike and slung them at me. <laughs> I've rolled up the... I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Leave them there. <laughs> I've, uh, I've rolled up the string like you said, Tub. Well? I can't get it off me fingers now. <laughs> I think I've rolled it too tight. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I don't know. I just thought you might have... Just thought you might have an idea. Well, I haven't. <laughs> you just have to work it out for yourself. Stop picking my brains. Now, what else have we got here? Well, surely you don't want this. Put that down. <laughs> that is the only one of its kind in East Cheam. <laughs> that is an unopened box of chocolate biscuits, handed to my grandfather as he got off the troop ship for South Africa. Got off? Well, he should have gone, but his leg went funny just before they pulled up the gang. <laughs> Broke his heart not going with the rest of the lads. The tears were streaming down his face as he tore down the quayside and ran back home to his mother. It's an old family heirloom. I couldn't possibly throw that out. You realise you haven't got rid of anything yet? All right, all right. There's still a pile of stuff here. I'm only getting rid of the rubbish. It just happens that all the stuff we've picked so far is indispensable. I mean, most of this stuff can go. I mean, there's nothing here. Right. Well, I'll throw it all in the dustbin. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this? A jar of pills. What are they for? I don't know. The label's come off. <laughs> We can't throw them away because whatever they're for, I might get it again. <laughs> See now, a cotton reel. Oh, we'll keep that. I can bang four nails in it and make some woolen reins. The drawer's nearly as full now as it was when we started. Well, don't worry. There's nothing else here I want to keep. All this can go. Right. Wait a minute. All except the cigarette cards. There's nine here. Great film stars. George Arliss, Mary Astor, Richard Dix, Lyle Barrymore, Miriam Hopkins, George Brent, <laughs> Melvin Douglas... Nelson Eddy and Zazu Pitts. When did you collect those? 1937. Well, what do you want to keep them now for? Well, swaps, of course. <laughs> I want to make the set up. You never know. There might be someone who's got something to change. You put them back in the drawer. Hello, what's this? Well, well, <laughs> me sweet coupons. <laughs> Fancy finding those. Hello, I've still got a quarter here. <laughs> you better keep those, then. What for? Well, supposing they bring them back. I've got a quarter of a pound of almond nougat in me. What about this thing here? Oh, we must keep that. What is it? What do you mean, what is it? It's a... Uh, it's... Well, how do I know what it is? <laughs> We'd better keep it, though. It might be something important. It's good quality metal, that is. It only needs a clean-up, and it'll be as good as new. But what is it? What does it matter what it is? <laughs> Suffice to know that if we ever need one, we've got one. Tub, me fingers are turning white. <laughs> oh? Yeah, the, the string's getting tighter. You shouldn't have dipped your hand in the water, should you? Well, I had to. The string was on fire. I tried to burn it off with me cigarette lighter. What a buffoon. Cut it off with the scissors. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? I suppose, of course, you want to keep this. Naturally. What's that? 
a thin strip of aluminium with the following inscription stamped on it. I love you, Elsie. Clapham Junction Station, June 1940. <laughs> Elsie, Elsie. Oh, yes, I remember. An ATS girl. Oh, she was horrible, yes. <laughs> I remember it now. Platform 7. We had three hours to wait before the train came in and she wanted something to remember me by. There was nothing in the chocolate machine, so I went over and bashed her out a penneth of that. <laughs> Sent it back three years later. She said she'd found someone she liked better than me. He had more money. Could afford to bash out longer messages. <laughs> keep it, though. It's a link with me sordid past. Well, that's it. There's nothing else I want to keep. You can throw all the rest away. What's left? A thimble with the top worn down. Is that all? Yes. Oh, you can throw that away, then. You mean you don't want to keep it? No, I don't think Skiffle will last much longer. <laughs> now throw it away. Well, so much for the clear out. One thimble. It's hardly worth the trouble, was it? I don't know. It doesn't do any harm to take stock of one's valuables now and again. One's valuables? You wouldn't get any more than ninepence for that lot, including the sideboard. Tub! <laughs> Tub! What? what? I can't get the scissors under the string. It's too tight. I think we'd better do something. My fingers are throbbing and they're turning blue. <laughs> Look, you wound the string round your fingers, right? Yeah. Well, to get it off, why not try winding it in the opposite direction? Oh, yeah. Why didn't I think of that? I'll go. Yes? Any old iron, old rags, bottles, old bones, bundles of old newspapers, jam jars, mangles, old bedsteads. Sid, what are you doing? <laughs> well, times are hard, son. I've got to make a living somehow. <laughs> sure to get in a job, this is about all I know. Well, I never thought I'd see a man of your calibre come down to this. Is that your horse and cart out there? Well, almost. I got another 27 and 6 to pay on the horse. <laughs> well, it's very good. How much did he cost? 30 bob. <laughs> 30 shillings for a horse? You can't buy horses that cheap. Horses like that one, you can. <laughs> what a waste of money he was. Spends most of his time sitting in the back of the cart. Oh, poor old horse. What about poor old Sid pulling it? <laughs> What's the matter with him? Is he past it or something? Past it? He's only three and he's as strong as a horse. He's just dead lazy, that's all. And cunning. Dead cunning. The minute I put him between those shafts, he develops a limp. He holds his foot up and puts his head on one side. And well, you know what I am with animals. I have him in the back of the cart with a couple of sacks of woolens under his head. Then when it's time to go home, it's amazing how quick his foot gets better. Costing me a fortune to keep his horse in grub, he is. And particular, dead particular, he won't touch edges and tree bark like other horses. No, he's only got to have the best quality brand. So come on then, son, what about selling me something? Sid James buys anything. Best prices paid for old iron, bottles, bones, any old junk, I'll take anything. What about some old rags? Get your hands off my suit. <laughs> I'll give you a dollar for it. I'm not selling this. This is my squire set. I look very county in this, standing on the doorstep with me gun. Mm, you would do in the country, but not at 23 railway cuttings. Well, I know there are no animals here, but I've got a couple of tin cans on the brick wall. A tanner for the hat. Never. I'll cut two holes in it and put it on the horse. <laughs> he needs something with all this sun about. Oh, it's for his dear little horsey. Go on, give it to him. <laughs> His dear little horsey. I will not. You give him one of your daft hats. <laughs> give him that black monstrosity with the windmill on it. He is not having my Tyrolean hat. Well, you must have something you can flog me. Let me come in and have a look round. Oh, blimey, yes. There's loads of rubbish here. here. Look, I'll back the horse and cart up to the front door. We'll have all the lounge and dining room cleared in no time. You will do no such thing. You don't mean you want to keep it all, do you? I certainly do. This rubbish, as you so eloquently put it, is my home. These are heirlooms and treasures that have taken a lifetime to collect. So you can fold that sack up, put your way in up back in your buttonhole and kindly leave the premises. Now, oh, come on, come on. There must be something here you don't want. Fifteen bob for the harmonium. I couldn't part with that. The place wouldn't be the same without it. It's been part of the Hancock household for generations. How well I remember me dear mother playing it of a Sunday afternoon in the music room at Hancock Towers. I would stand in my velvet suit and lace collar with me hoop at me side and listen in raptured, watching her delicate white fingers gliding over the keyboard, lovingly caressing each note as she frantically knocked out boar beef and carrots. <laughs> yes, her great feet pounding up and down on those treadles like Reg Harris. <laughs> and you asked me to sell it, so I'd sooner starve. How much for a glass dome with a piece of wedding cake under it? You can't have that. That was my grandmother's. That wedding cake has been under that glass since 1873. 
and it's as good now as the day it was dug out of the copper. Look at it, they don't make suet pudding like that these days. Suet pudding for a wedding? Well, they covered it in icing. Nobody knew till they cut it, and they were off on their honeymoon by then. Three old days in Stoke. I've got a picture here, that's the guests seeing them off. You see, there's the bride and groom standing on the prow of the boat as the horse pulls it up the canal towards Manchester. Ah, the old people still talk about that wedding. Sixty barrels of beer and fourteen hundred weight of sausage rolls. What a wedding it must have been. He spent the rest of his life trying to pay for it. I'll tell you what, I'll do you a favour. Thirty bob and I'll take the stuffed eagle, the potted palm, the rocking chair and the Morrison shelter. No, I'd rather not, Sid. If you take the Morrison shelter, I'll only have to buy a table and the rate the plaster's coming down, we need it there anyway. <laughs> Besides, it's Bill's bedroom. He wouldn't sleep under a wooden table. And the potted palm makes the room look rather Arabic for when I'm in my Valentino mood. <laughs> Apart from stopping the neighbours from seeing in. Well, I've got to buy something. Yeah, how much for that bit of canvas on the floor? That is the carpet. <laughs> I'm not getting rid of it yet. There's still a bit of wool in the corner somewhere. Tub. Oh, what? Hello, Sid. Hello, Bill. <laughs> well? Well, what? You called me. Did I? Yes. You said, tub. <laughs> and I said, oh, what? And you said, hello, Sid. And Sid said, hello, Bill. <laughs> then I said, well? And you said, well, what? <laughs> and I said, you called me. Now, I want to know why you called me in the first place. Uh, um, uh... Well, think, man, what was it? Uh, uh, uh... Mm. Are your shoes hurting you? No. Are you hungry? No. Think hard, it'll come. Don't get flustered. Now, keep calm. Now, what was it? Uh, uh, uh... Hello, Sid. You've said that. Uh... Stop wasting my time. What do you want? It must have been something. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I remember what it was. I've got the string off me fingers. <laughs> Oh, good lad. How did you do it? Well, I unwound it off me fingers like you said to. See, a little bit of thought. What have you done with the string? It's wound round me other fingers now. <laughs> and it's tighter this time. It's certain twice as much. Sid, you can buy them if you like. You'd like to go on Sid's cart, wouldn't you? Uh, no, I just want to get this string off me fingers. They've gone numb, you know. Have they? Yeah, go on. Help me get it off. No. You've got to learn to stand on your own two feet. If we keep helping you do things, you'll never learn. Now, you go and sit in the corner and work it out for yourself. Now then, where were we? Seven and six for all the books in your bookcase. Seven and six for gems from the world's greatest literature? On those shelves, I have the complete works of Shakespeare, Thackeray, Ben Johnson, Walter Scott, Charles Dickens, Bernard Shaw and Hank Jensen. Uh, <laughs> I don't care who published them. I buy them by the underweight. Oh, you Philistine, books are the rich soil in which grows the fruit of human knowledge. And you buy them for seven and six a hundredweight. All right, then, if you want to keep them. Of course I want to keep them. You don't realise how important those books are to me. I don't know what I'd have done without them. How's that? Well, I wouldn't have had a crease in my trousers for a start. <laughs> what, 16 volumes of Thackeray piled on me Bedford cords of a Saturday night? Got an edge on them like a guard's bayonet. <laughs> sorry, Sid, there's nothing here I would care to part with. Any knives need grinding? No, I'm sorry. No, well, never mind. The horse has had a good feed off your rose bushes. I saved myself a few cups. <laughs> so, you got nothing at all, then? Not a thing. Wait a minute. What about up in the loft? There might be something up there to interest Sydney. Yeah, anything. I don't mind what it is. I'll take it off your hands. Well, there must be stuff stored up there you don't want. Why don't you go up and have a look? Yeah, go on. Be a pal. See what you can find. All right, then. Well, I don't think there's anything I'd like to see go. I won't be a minute. Now he's gone, Sidney. Listen, how much for the contents of this drawer? What's in it? Well, give me two and six and chance your luck. I'll give you three, Bob, if you throw in the stuffed eagle and the potted palm. Sold. Get him out of here and on your cart before he comes down. All right, then. Tell Grizzly. Open the door for me. <laughs> Tell her, then I'll sort it all out back at the yard. Now, let's get rid of that lot. No, I'm sorry, Sid. There's nothing up here like... Oh, he's gone. Yes, he said he couldn't wait any longer. Oh, well, never mind. I didn't have anything for him anyway. Tub! Now what? I've got the string off me other hand now. 
Congratulations. How did you do it? Well, I knew if I tried to unwind it again, I'd just get it back on the hand I had it on first of all. So I thought to myself, I'll be clever. I won't use my hand at all. <laughs> so I got the end of it in my teeth and unwound it that way. And it worked. Good lad. Where's the string? I swallowed it. <laughs> I'll put a label on him and send him back home, I think. Hello? Hello? Where's Polly? Where's me stuffed eagle? Polly's gone. Polly? Polly? Polly, 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 Polly. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul. Where's me potted palm? Polly and me potted palm gone. <laughs> Who's had Polly and me potted palm? <laughs> Miss Pew? Miss Pew? I don't want any of your excuses, Sydney. I want my property back. It's mine, boy. I bought it. She had no right to sell it to you. It wasn't hers. I demand you give me back my eagle, my potted palm, and my drawer full of personal belongings. There was nothing but rubbish in that drawer. It was useful rubbish, and I want it back. And I want Polly. The house isn't the same without her great beak staring at me. <laughs> Finest bottle opener I ever had. <laughs> I want Polly, the palm, and the drawer. Well, you can't have them. Why not? Because I haven't got them. We scrap merchants don't keep our merchandise. We're only the middlemen. I've disposed of it. Well, who did you sell it to? Oh, I'm sorry, son. Professional etiquette. I can't tell you. A gentleman at 35, the larches. <laughs> he said it was just what he was looking for. Well, he must be mad. I shall go straight down there and buy them back off him. I warn you, he's a shrewd nut. If he thinks you really want him, he'll charge you through the nose. You could never do business with him. Well, you did. Well, well, that's different. I'm in the business. He knows I know what I'm doing. Yes. I see what you mean. Sid? Yeah. Will you lend me your horse and cart? Half a quid. Oh, all right. Hey, Riggs, Bob's back. <laughs> hey, old Jack, you are. Any of your particularly stuffed eagles, poly palms, and drawers full of rubbish. <laughs> Get your poly palms and drawers full of rubbish out. <laughs> Turn out your jack, rags, balls, and burn your olive. You know, for the fast time now. <laughs> Any arrived, jam jars, sponges, firewood, sewing machine. Yes. <laughs> Any uh, rags, bottles, or bones, Gov? No. <laughs> Any old junk I'll take. I'm not fussy. I'll take anything. Well, you can start by taking your foot out of the door. <laughs> I haven't got anything for you. Oh, come now. We never know what we've got until we look. I'll come in and help you, shall I? No, thank you. Oh, my, my. What a lovely room. Get out. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very elegant. What perfect taste. The only thing spoiled in it is that stuffed eagle and that rotten old palm tree. I'll take them off your hands for you. I happen to like the stuffed eagle and the potted palm. I only acquired them this morning. I think they suit the room. Well, I think they look horrible. You'd be well rid of those, sir. I pay the best prices. No, I won't sell, thank you. Is there anything else in the room you fancy? Now, how about this china statue with the head missing? No. No, I don't want that. Then there's no more to be said, is there? Good day. No, no, don't, <laughs> don't throw me out. I'll buy it. D how much? Five shillings. Daylight robbery. Here you are, then. Now, about the eagle and the potted no, palm. No, I really I... don't want to sell the eagle or the potted palm. I've got a box full of plastic saucers. <laughs> what good are they to me? Good day. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait a minute. How much are they? Seven and six. Put them in my sack. Now, about the eagle and the potted palm, you won't get a better price no, than I, really I pay. Do. I really want to hang on to those. I'm rather attached to them. But I've got a nice little item here you might be interested in. A collection of seashells. They make beautiful ashtrays. 150 of them here. I don't want any seashells. Good day. How much? 15 shillings. <laughs> now, thank you. Are these broken German swords any good to you? Won't you consider the eagle and the potted palm? Well, I'm not convinced you're the right chap to have them, really. I mean, you're not very interested in my other treasures, are you? Oh, I am. I am. I think the whole collection is madly gay. <laughs> How much for the swords? 30 shillings the pair. Now, the eagle and the potted palm. Now, here's a little something. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a warming pan. I'm sure you could do something with it. <laughs> Oh, 
How much? Twelve and six. Put it in the sack. <laughs> now, the potted part. Here, do you like these door hands? No. <laughs> How much? Well, there's three dozen. You can have them for ooh, 15 shillings. You wouldn't throw the eagle in with that crate full of army surplus thermometers, would you? Well, I might do. Three pounds for the thermometers. One, two, three. Thank you. Now the eagle. No, I don't think I can part with it after all. I'll tell you what I'm thinking of selling. My collection of gramophone records. I've got all of Whispering Jack Smith, a few Leighton and Johnsons, and most of Harry Roy and his Tiger Ragamuffins. <laughs> Yes, well, I don't think they'll be much good to me. I don't really deal in gramophone music. Oh, what a pity. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I expect you want to get on. I'm a sure tanner you... each. Well, certainly. Uh, there's 150. That'll be three pounds ten. Right. Now, that eagle, I personally think it's wrong for here. I mean, it's too tatty for a gent like you. Well, are. what about I... a box full of lawnmower parts? <laughs> Only 25 shillings. Thank you very much. Now, this eagle... Do you like that fire guard with the wire missing? Oh, yes, it's lovely. I'd keep that if I were you. Now, do you see, I think... <laughs> I think it's ugly. I don't like it. You don't? No, it's broken. It's cumbersome and completely useless. But about this eagle? I wish I could get rid of that fire guard. I'm very interested in the potted palm now. I'll give you a fair price you for it. You know, if someone would only take that fire guard off my hands, I'd be most grateful. <laughs> I'd share my gratitude in a very generous manner. <laughs> All right, then. I'll give you a quid for it. Thank you. Now, what about showing your gratitude? Well, of course. You can have free of charge that cracked fish tank. <laughs> You're most kind. Uh, not at all. Now, over here, I have some old candlesticks and some slashed oil paintings. They only need sewing up. I also have some very unusual moustache cups. Charming. I'll have them all. Now, about this eagle. <laughs> Isn't that piano beautiful? How much? Three pounds ten. Push it next to the wardrobe and the twelve deck chairs. I'll load them onto the cart later. Well, I think we've just about cleaned the house out now, haven't we? Well, yeah, I think we have. All, ex all except the eagle, the potted palm, and the drawer full of assorted rubbish you bought this morning. Yes. How much? I don't know. Actually, I want to leave this district. I am not buying the house. No, no, I was just saying I... <laughs> I, I think I will sell you the eagle and the potted palm after all. At last. How much? The same as I paid for them. Three shillings. Ten pounds. He's a twister, that James. All right, in for a penny, in for a pound. Load them on the cart. Well, thank you very... It's very nice to have done business with you. Do call again. Come round tomorrow. My partner will be bringing a new lot of junk round. Your partner? Yes. He collects it and I sell it. We get a much bigger profit that way than by taking it to the scrapyard. Yes. Yes. I won't ask you what your partner's name is. I'm sure you recognise the horse. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, a bit of a Charlie on the quiet, aren't you? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. How much? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not bringing it in here. I paid good money for all this, and it's not staying outside. Now, help me get this piano in. I had the place tidy for once. I don't care. It's coming in. There's no room for any more junk. There's no room to stand as it is. The whole house is full up from top to bottom. Then we'll have to camp out in the garden. Here you are. Three dozen gas masks. They might come in handy. <laughs> Twenty-three thermos flasks without any stoppers. <laughs> a thousand yards of copper wire. A box of string unwound. Where's the box of unwound string? Tub! <laughs> oh, no. How did he get both lots of fingers tied up? Oh, get out of the way. Two boxes of ex-Navy signalling flags. A pair of boots, a biscuit tin, two empty whiskey bottles, and three grocer meat skewers. <laughs> right, that is the lot, and if anyone says anything again about having a clear out, I'll slosh them. <laughs> You've been listening to Hancock's Half Hour, starring Tony Hancock, with Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes, and Kenneth Williams. Theme and incidental music composed and conducted by Wally Stott. The show written by Alan Simpson and Ray Galton. The programme was produced for the BBC by Tom Ronald. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Hancock's Half Hour. And don't forget, we'll be back with Mystery and Suspense from Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson going live tomorrow at 5pm GMT. As I mentioned, we've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And don't forget, please share the show across your social media. 
Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brad's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. Bye.